Baker Mayfield needed this game last night. What did you see from him? What should the fans come away thinking from the way he played last night? Well, thank you for having me back. It is my honor to be joining this eclectic crew of human beings that we're going to talk this morning. I think Baker Mayfield needed this game last night in a bad way. National television, obviously, with the thought of him potentially being the quarterback of the future or not for the Browns. But what I saw out of Baker Mayfield, not only him moving out of the pocket, he looked like he had his swag back, like he had at Oklahoma, but this is his fourth offensive coordinator. He connected with Odell Beckham a couple of times. But if you look at what uh, Andrew Barry has done for the Cleveland Browns for them, he's invested in that running game. He's got Jack Conklin coming in from the Tennessee Titans, who had the leading rusher last year in Derrick Henry. He brought in Austin Hooper, which is a road grader tight end for him. Obviously, you have Kareem Hunt and Chubb in the backfield, two of which have been leading rushers in the NFL at one point. So I think with that type of offense being around Baker, it kind of opens him up a little bit more with the play action, with a little bit more letting him not carry the burden of the entire team on his shoulders. And I think that is why Baker Mayfield was successful last night. And I think that is why Baker Mayfield could be successful moving forward and the bronze quarterback for some time to come. Yeah, so RC, he threw it for 219. They ran it for 215. That's mm -hmm. obviously a recipe for success for anyone. What did you see from Baker? Yeah. How much confidence do you take from what we saw last night? Well, obviously, Kevin Stefanski woke up yesterday feeling very dangerous because he <laughs> did the, the things for Baker Mayfield that you needed. He got him outside of the pocket early. He gave him some easy throws. The double move to Odell Beckham Jr. was a clear throw. There was no one right in the face of Baker Mayfield because he got him out on the boot. It was a Kyle Shanahan, Gary Kubiak, Mike Shanahan type performance from Kevin Stefanski, and that's why he was brought there. He was brought there to give Baker some of those looks he got at OU. Some of those things that Lincoln Riley was able to scheme up for him. And we saw that. And when Baker gets going, and this is in no way an indictment on Baker or a negative about him, but he's a front runner. And not a front run runner in a negative way. But when things get to going good, and when he's fired up, and when he has some of that swag like you heard Pat talk about earlier, that's when he's his best. When he's feeling good, enjoying it, having a great time, not having to think too much, not having some of those negative Negative thoughts creep up on the sideline. That's what we saw last night. We saw a Baker Mayfield that had fun. A Baker Mayfield that wasn't under duress the entire night. They took some things off of him with the run game as well. This is the way that this team has to play football. Not throw it 30 or 40 times and continue to put the ball in the air or put the ball on Baker Mayfield. It's to have ball control and then hit the big plays with your explosive receivers later on in the game or through play action. Fair, but RC, let's talk about your LSU uh, buddy there and, and Odell Beckham. I never thought I would find myself saying, we had a pretty good night, four catches for 74 yards. That's not Odell. Is he getting back on track, RC? What do you see from him last night? Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. Kevin Stefanski said that Odell Beckham Jr. has the most bounce of any player that he's ever been around. And that's special when you think about some of the other players that he has coached with. Odell Beckham is not has not gone away. The, the talent that he is has not diminished. It's just been about getting him the ball in the areas that he can play. This is what I'll say. There were two more routes last night where Odell Beckham Jr. had his cornerback beat or had his man-to-man -man coverage beat. Do you know why Baker Mayfield couldn't throw that ball because the safety slid to Odell Beckham Jr. Even with all the weapons on that team, he is still the focal point of each defense. So four catches and 70-something yards and one touchdown might be good nights for Odell Beckham, but there were no drops, there was no confusion, and there seemed to be no attitude at all from Odell Beckham Jr. because they tried to get him involved. He's a great player. He's going to play great when he has his opportunities. So, Diana, let's talk about that. Aaron Goldhammer, a Cleveland radio talk show host, was on with KJZ across the hall earlier this morning suggesting that OBJ could still be traded. From what you know, would you be shocked if that happened? Uh, you, you asked the question, will you be shocked? I was sitting in the green room with Chris Mortensen when the New York Giants traded Odell Beckham Jr., and that was perhaps one of the most shocking moments I've ever had as a reporter because we knew that the Giants at that time had paid him, they'd given him the contract, and we weren't getting a sense. But the reality in Cleveland right now, I can tell you that during the offseason, there were definitely serious conversations in the organization about perhaps looking at the option of trading Odell Beckham Jr. Everything Brian Clark just pointed to in terms of the talent 
the mentality and, and obviously Odell Beckham Jr. being a fan favorite in Cleveland. That is all true, but he is not one of those players in this league that is untradeable. Will the Cleveland Browns always be willing to listen to offers from other teams if they're interested in? Yes. This is not something that has been taken off the table despite the fact that we saw a performance last night with him and Baker Mayfield that could be absolutely magical if they can continue this through, throughout this season. All right, so they get it to one and one where they need it to be. Let's talk about the other quarterback in this game, McAfee. Joe Burrow, 0-2, but at least through my eyes, he's shown himself pretty well. He played well against a good defense in week one, and last night they asked him to throw it 61 times, and he almost wins the game for him. What have you seen so far from the number one pick? I think the thing about Joe Burrow, even whenever you look back at LSU, is he's always just so cool. you got to remember, going into his senior year, he was projected as a fifth-round draft pick. Then he has the greatest collegiate quarterback season in the history of college football and goes to the number one overall pick. Wins the Heisman, wins the national championship. You saw him smoking the cigar in the locker room. I mean, it just feels like there's never a moment that's too big for Joe Burrow. Fourth quarter, opening week, let me drive my team down. Offensive pass interference kind of stunts a game-winning drive in my first ever game in the NFL. Then the worst cramp in the history of sports happens to Randy Bullock, and he misses the kick. And then last <laughs> night, there was a lot of things that happened where Joe Burrow and that Cincinnati Bengals team could have curled up and kind of went home. But instead... Joe Burrow answered every single time. He answered the bell. He's oh, obviously man. an athlete. He makes all the plays that he possibly could want to make. I think there's a lot of hope in Cincinnati for Joe Burrow. I think putting 61 passes on that arm in his second ever game is insane. I think the defense has to pick it up for him as well. But I think the future is very bright in Cincinnati with old Joey B. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.